So the cover sheet's the first thing that it seems obvious, but you'd be shocked at how often people don't look at the cover sheet. I can't tell you how many construction trailers I've been in where I ask a question uh, when I'm inspecting something and the project manager is leafing through the blueprints for 10 minutes trying to find something. But really all you have to do is go to the cover sheet. Everything within here, these whole set, is right within this list of drawings. And, and to me, that's probably one of the first places you should look if you're gonna, uh, if you're looking for something specific within the drawings. The other thing I always like to do when I'm first looking at a set of drawings is I like to go to the elevation pages because the elevation pages are the ones that show you what the project is actually going to look like. Because we don't always know what we're building until we... Like who knew this set of drawings was a building that looked like this unless you went to the elevation sheets. So to me it's one of the first places to go. You know what, let's see what it looks like. And we're going to go through what's on the elevation sheets and how we should refer to them. But to me it's always a nice place to start. It's a little like having a puzzle and it, you know being able to look at the picture of what the puzzle is going to look like at the end you know unless you've seen the elevation sheets it's kind of like well you know what, what's going on here so that's the picture of the puzzle a cover sheet will always have a model number or name of the project or what the building is uh, what it's referring to typically it's going to have your code information on the front of it uh, if you want to know what code this building is being built to or something. It's typically going to be on your front page of the drawings. If not on the front page, it's going to be awfully close to it, probably within one or two pages beyond that, if the cover page goes beyond one. It's going to have your calculations. It'll give you your square footage of the space. Uh, this is even broken down into conditioned space and unconditioned space. Conditioned space is any space within a building that's heated or air conditioned that has some type of mechanical control to give the temperature and environment in there. Unconditioned space, like a garage, typically isn't conditioned at all. And plans are usually broken down into conditioned and unconditioned space. And that will be on the front page too. The index. Is what we talked about. You know, everything that's within these set of drawings are all within our index. And it's pretty easy, really, even when you think about it, on the index, because things are laid out into the A sheets. You notice here in the bottom corner, and it would be down in this corner on the drawing, but here we have A, and then it's got a number. Well, A refers to the architecturals. That, that means that it's going to be anything with the building itself. And then you've got the M sheets. What do you think the M sheets might be? Mechanical, right. And P, plumbing, and E, electrical. So right off the bat, if you're not looking for something electrical, plumbing, mechanical, you can probably eliminate this much of what's on that set of index drawings if you're looking for just something that refers to the architectural drawings. And they'll be under the A sheets. One of the interesting things about drawings, you know, obviously the designer that put this together uh, thinks he's an artist. You know, while all artists draw something differently, uh, you know, uh, but so all drawings aren't going to be the exact same, but they do all pretty much have these common elements to them. But, just keep in mind that every set of drawings from every engineering firm or architectural firm, they're, they're going to vary slightly just because of the person that put them together. You'll have material symbols. Uh, you know, if you're looking through the drawings, I still don't understand what all the, the symbols are. You know, I'm always referring to the front page or to the key for it. I mean, look at how how many symbols this set of drawings has for this whole project. 
but they're all right here. So if you're going through the drawing and you don't um, understand what something is, it's probably on the front page. The other thing to keep in mind with drawings, and, and I, I know myself, and maybe I'm speaking for myself, but you sometimes feel like you should know everything when you're going through it with somebody. You know, maybe I'm looking with a construction manager or something. And you sometimes feel like, oh, gee, I should probably know the answer to this. And, you know, you don't feel like you should, uh, you know, what does that mean? You know, you don't want to say something, but you should. Because everything is different in the drawings, on each set of drawings and maybe each project. You know, you're not expected to know everything. You know, don't be intimidated or feel like, embarrassed about going to look up what something stands for because that's why it's there and that's why the architect put it there so everybody is familiar with what hey here's how I drew the wall and here's what it is these are all the other designations we're going to go through what these symbols are but just keep in mind I would look at these designations as your road signs uh, you know, if you look at this as a map, a map of how to build something, well, if you look at these, these are your road signs. These are going to tell you direction. These are going to give you, this is your GPS to get through the set of drawings. These are going to refer you to another page. They're going to refer you to another section. They're going to refer you to some other aspect of a particular part of the drawing. So if you follow what these are, you're going to be able to maneuver through the drawing a whole lot easier than if you don't pay attention to it. You know, you listen to your GPS, well, listen to the road signs here because they are going to direct you. And one of the interesting things about drawings, that nothing is ever right on one page. It's always here, but then you got to refer over here and then back to this and then back again. These are what's going to refer you through those areas. And where we often run into a problem with drawings and following a set of drawings is because we're being thrown all around within the set of drawings, they often don't match. You know, something to really keep in mind. Yeah, I might be going through the drawings and it refers me to page A5, the yeah, detail. Well, that detail might not match something that's on the page that I just came from. And you really have to keep that in mind when you're going through because sometimes even the architect didn't pick that up when he was going through them. They'll have a license number in New Jersey. You have to be, plans have to be stamped by a licensed architect or engineer. Or unless you're doing your own project, you are allowed to do your own set of drawings for your own house. They don't have to be registered. And here's the sheet number and the issue date. The issue date is really important. It's a little number here, but that's the date of the plan you're drawing. And I can't tell you how many times I've been on a job and I have one date, the person building it has another date, and the subcontractor that's actually doing the work has a third date. And, and, and it's kind of like, you know, guys, we've all got to get on the same page here. And, and that's why always look at your date. And if you're referring with somebody on a project and you have a set of drawings and they have a set of drawings, make sure you both have the same things because otherwise you probably have different information. So the architectural sheets, the A sheets, are made up of the foundation plan, the floor plans, elevations, elevations are what the, the building looks like, and building sections. And what you want to keep in mind is, with blueprints, there's really just three, well probably four main aspects to keep in mind with blueprints. The plan, which is looking at something straight down. You've cut, you slice something in half, you've opened up the top, and you're looking straight down. These are plant views. Then you've got an elevation. Well, that's looking at something straight on. That's taking an object and looking at it straight on from all four sides. And then you've got a section. 
Well, that's take, taking that same object and slicing it in half, but it doesn't have to be in half, but slicing it at some point from end to end, opening it up and looking at it and seeing what's inside. So if you keep that in mind, everything in a set of drawings is either a plan view, which is straight down, it's either an elevation, which is looking at something straight at it, or it's a building section. It's a section with something cut right in half and looking at the inside of it. And then you have details, and details are just taking certain aspects of whatever the project is and saying, hey, here's how that's going to come together. I, I put this up there because we're real quick sometimes to grab an architectural rule and say, you know, it says at the scale, every set of drawings has a scale to it. You, you should almost forget about that because chances are the scale that it was built to isn't going to scale out the same on the set of drawings. And, and that's because of the way they were printed. The scale on this, I could print this at 11 by 17, I could print this at an 8 by 11, or I could print it in this size, which is 2 by whatever. Well, that scale doesn't match, wouldn't scale out with the architectural rule. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it just depends on what paper it's been put on. So, you know, be careful about taking out a rule and saying, oh, you know, it's a quarter of an inch to a foot, so let's see, this is two inches, you know, that must be eight feet. Well, that may not be the case depending on what paper you put it on. So, it's just something to be a little cautious. And every page isn't always the same. And every page isn't always the same, you're right. Yeah. Some pages are half inch, some are depending on what the detail but is. But if you want to get a wag, you can measure it to scale and then see how far off it is, so you know you're 25% yeah. off or 30% off. And you can off. get close. Uh, you know, but you're not going to build the thing by estimating it that way, but you can get close to it, yeah, you're right.